In this video I'm going to be assembling the Spikenzi Labs calculator kit. They've been kind enough to send this over to me. If you go to spikenzilabs.com you'll see all the details about this kit and the price and things are on there as well as a downloadable PDF of the instructions that I'm showing you on the screen now gives you a bit of an idea as to what you're letting yourself in for it looks more complicated than it is but they put a lot of nice uh, illustrations on here some hints and tips it's pretty much foolproof if I can put one of these things together I'd imagine anyone can now I'm going to be filming this with a two camera setup on tripod so that I've got my hands free for doing all the soldering and things so uh, you'll have to bear with the sort of camera changes during the course of the video as well as the kit itself you've got to get yourself a few bits and pieces of equipment which I've got here the only thing that's not in this picture that I also used was a hex screwdriver anyway let's get inside the bags and have a look what you get in there uh, it's sort of separated into two halves one's got the electronic components and the other one's got all the sort of plasticky bits but we'll get everything out of the packaging inside there you'll find this card here which again tells you how to download the instructions off the internet now I mentioned those were a PDF it's a good idea to put those on a computer by the side of you print them out or as I was doing as I was doing this I put them on my iPad screen so I could flick through them as I was assembling it now we'll put the plastic bits to one side and we'll just have all the electronic components out in front of us here um, and we'll sort of separate all those out and see what we've got all the plastic bits I'll just uh, I'll just put to one side and keep those out of the way for the moment we'll need those at the end but not right now because what we're going to do at the beginning is all the stuff to do with soldering things together and sort of assembling the electronic circuits of this kit now step one is to put on the battery holder which is this thing here uh, they start you off quite good with this kit they, they do the sort of easy soldering first and then it seems like they work your way up to getting onto the more complicated stuff so you get a bit of practicing at the beginning like I'm doing my soldering technique is terrible but if I can put one of these things together anyone should be able to but as I say you start off doing sort of big soldering joints like the battery uh, holder there and once you're happy with that uh, you can move on as you see there I'm holding it down with some decorators tape or gaffer tape or whatever you want to call it because it uh, just holds it in place while you're doing a bit of soldering it's like having a third hand uh, these things here are the resistors you have to bend the legs on them so that they're at, at an angle like that I'm just testing one on the circuit board now to see that I've sort of bent it correctly so it fits through the holes in the right place and now I'm going to bend all the other ones the same just because I know that I'm doing it right now now the thing with these is also you've got to have them the right way around according to the picture that's in the instructions there they only fit sort of one way around well they'll fit both ways around but they won't work one way around so make sure you've got them correctly facing they've got little stripes on them of course to show you which side is which so there you go I've got them all in place now so get out a bit more of that tape again tape it over the top of them to hold them in place while I flip it upside down and solder the reverse now I know people always comment on these videos when I assemble these things you can splay the legs out if you want and that will hold the uh, component in place as well well you can do that if you want but I want to use tape if you want to splay your legs out go ahead that's your business anyway I'm soldering the uh, little joints on these as you can see working my way down and it feels like as you're getting through this kit your soldering technique does get a little bit better you seem to be sort of practicing as you go along this is the fun bit of course clipping off all the sticky out legs once you've got them soldered in place getting them as close to the circuit board as you can now of course you've got to watch out for these uh, things flinging across the room sticking in your eyes so make sure you've got some eye protectors on there and then peel the tape off make sure everything stays in place of course and now we're moving on to the capacitors these two little tiny things here these can fit in sort of any orientation but just make sure you put them through the right holes of course um, and as before I'm gonna just tape those in place and then flip it over and as you can imagine we're soldering those uh, four legs in there um, and once we've got them in place we can peel that tape back if we want and again clip the sticky out legs off first admiring our handiwork there that looks pretty neat doesn't it I think uh, as long as you don't look at the back where I've done the solder joints you'll think that this looks like a professional job when I've finished 
Now the next thing we're doing is all these little buttons. These are the uh, calculator buttons, of course. Uh, there's, uh, I think there's 16 of them. What's one, no, 17 maybe. Anyway, little tiny things like little crabs, these. You gotta put those legs through the holes on the circuit board first, kind of wobble them around a little bit. They're a little bit fiddly to get in, but you get a sort of technique as you go along. The idea is you sort of push them through, make sure they're as flat as you can possibly get them to the circuit board. You don't want any sort of uh, gap in between them and the circuit board. You want them back to rest on it. And um, once you've got all those in place and you sort of waggled them all into the, uh, into the circuit board and you're happy with it, you can then um, start soldering the legs on these. Now, of course, we're getting into the stage of the build now where we're soldering quite a few things together that are similar. So uh, you'll find that you're really starting to sort of build up speed now as you go through these different solder joints because they're all the same. So you sort of get a little bit of a, a speed going on here. And if, um, if I carry on like this, I'll get a job at Foxconn. So uh, just to examining my work there just soldering any that i wasn't entirely happy with once i'd sort of got it under the light there and then of course we're clipping off these little tiny legs off the back of here again uh, even though there are little sort of tiny little legs on here we're clipping them back because we want that circuit board to be pretty much flat or as flat as we can get it on the back anyway now we're moving on to the segments of the numbers. We've got to have them the right way up. We've got to have the decimal point at the bottom, of course. And also we're examining each one to see that there's no sort of sticky out bits of plastic on the edge because we want them all to go flush to one another. And then we're also checking that all the legs are straight because sometimes these can get a little bit bent in transit. So once we're happy with those, we're going to start putting them into the display. But we first put on this thing, this spacer, this clear plastic spacer that just sort of makes sure they go in the right place and also seems to separate them a little bit from the backing there's some reason for that which obviously somebody knows about but i don't quite understand but don't worry about it just follow the instructions and do what you're told so uh, i'll put the first number in here and then the last number so that that holds itself in place and then all i'm going to do is of course put all the other numbers in between now can you guess what's going to happen next yeah, a little bit of tape over the top again just to hold those in place so that when i flip it over they don't all fall out of position and now we've got quite a lot of legs on there to solder so uh the instructions suggest that you start at one end and solder a row and then snip off the legs and then move on to the next row i did that to start with but then i sort of found that i was better off if i just soldered the whole thing at once i seemed to get a bit more of a kind of rhythm going then so i soldered it all the way across and then at the end i just uh, snipped off all the legs off the back of those numbers once i was happy of course each solder joint was perfect or as perfect as i'm ever going to get it anyway Right, so of course, peel off this tape and let's see uh, what we've got. Well, they all, all the numbers seem to be in place. They all seem flush. They all seem to be sort of close to one another. So next we're moving on to this chip. Now the thing with the chip is you've got to kind of bend it like that. I mean, people aren't really supposed to touch chips, but um, let's pretend I'm not doing this, but I am doing it anyway. You've got to make it so that the legs are square to the chip because when you get these things when you sort of buy them this they're a little bit splayed out again and they won't go through the holes in the circuit board now you got to line up that little notch on the left of the chip with the notch that's on the diagram on the circuit board that's the way round that the chip's supposed to go of course you've got to make sure you have the right orientation again we're going to put a little bit of tape on there and now we're going to do this uh, bit of soldering here this is the last bit of soldering we're doing we're moving down each leg on that chip from one end to the other soldering all the little legs there and at this point i'm a little bit disappointed that the soldering's finished because i was quite enjoying it by the time i got to this stage but there you go that's the last thing that i need to solder so peel off the tape and let's see how it looks well the back of that all right it could be better but it looks all right but the front definitely looks like it's uh, been done by someone that knows what they're doing put the uh, battery in and look what's going on it's on now you can't see it very well i've got very bright lights in the studio here i say studio it's a bedroom but don't tell anyone turn the lights off there we go calculator 1.1 that's the firmware version so you can see that it's working i've sort of dimmed the lights a little bit so you can see the calculator and the numbers at the same time and this is a good time to test out all the different buttons that we've got on the calculator to check that all the solder joints are correct and that all the functions are working. You notice, of course, it's only a six digit calculator rather than the more usual eight. Now we can unplug that soldering iron and put it away now because we've moved on from the electronics part of the construction onto the assembly of all the plastics in the kit. Now this was the bit that when I read the instructions I wasn't particularly relishing because it looked quite complicated. I mean the first thing you do is peel off 
any coating that's on any part of the plastic. It's all got this protective coating on. The uh, thick pieces have blue plastic coating on. The thinner pieces have white coating on. The one thing you don't peel off is the back of those numbers. The white squares on the back of the numbers you can see on the left there. The actual digits themselves, you peel those off as well. I'll show you that in a minute. But these little tiny bits of plastic, these are the bits that have been punched out from the middle of that sort of uh, number keypad thing. You're going to peel off all of these and put them to one side. Now you need to have some nails to do this and quite a bit of patience and time. Now the thinner bits of plastic, the bits that are covered with this white sticky back stuff, you've got to be pretty careful with these. I know this from experience that when I've built these things in the past, you can sometimes make a crack in that plastic. So really take your time over it. You don't want to damage anything at this stage after doing all that sort of good job with the soldering. Right, we're peeling the numbers off the number keys now, the white tape that's over the kind of glossy black number, uh, but we're not peeling the backs off those and we're just making sure that those are all right and ready. Now we're ready to go now and assemble this, so let's start off. First off, use the back plate. This is the back plate here, this solid piece. And then the thicker piece goes over that. Make sure you have it with the sort of button there at the top right. So you see, I just put my finger through it. Don't put that upside down. So it needs to go that way around like that. Okay, that's with the extra row at the top right. And then the next thing we do, we're putting these little tiny plastic squares that we've peeled off. We're putting one of those in each of these spaces. So uh, just let me do that. I'll speed it up so that you're not going to sleep while I do that. And there you go. It's all in nice and flat. So the next thing is put the top layer on again, making sure you got it the right way around with that sort of extra hole at the top right there. And that's in place now. So what we need to do now, uh, this is a temporary thing. We're putting these screws in. These are hex screws, like I mentioned earlier on. So you'll need a little hex screwdriver to screw them in. You can sort of finger tighten them, but really you do need a screwdriver to be able to get them through those layers. You can only sort of tighten them so far with your fingers. So tighten them up here, put them through the uh, calculator, not too tight, just tight enough to hold it because we're gonna take these out in a little bit. And now the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to put those black numbers in, but we're going to make sure they go in the right holes. So we're putting the calculator as a guide next to us. Notice it has numbers already printed on that circuit board to tell you where each button, number and function key goes. And now we're peeling the sticky back off the back of each letter, holding it by the side and putting it in the appropriate hole on the template thing here. So that's the C going in place, putting it through and it's sticking to that little plastic square that we put at the back there and we're just going to follow this all the way around following each key that's on the calculator to make sure they go in the right place because you're only really going to be able to do this once if they get stuck uh, and you're going to have a bit of a problem trying to get them out again I think. Push them all down make sure they rattle they're supposed to rattle that means that they're nice and loose but uh, they will work properly once it's all assembled. Right, now this is a weird thing. This is the, the bit of a strange bit. We're taping this piece again, all four sides, but we don't really want to tape the back, just the sort of side, so that it holds together when we take these screws out again. We only really put the screws through so that the thing was properly lined up. But now we've uh, lined it up, we've got everything in place. We don't need those screws in there anymore. Now we're taking the back off, so we're sort of peeling that off, and leaving the other layers in place because uh, we just need to remove that so that we can uh, get the circuit board in place behind those buttons that we've got there. So now we're putting the screws back in again and putting a little bit of tape over each one because of course we've got them the wrong way up, they'll just fall out otherwise. So we put a screw in and put a little bit of scrap blue tape under each one just to hold them in place like that. Now we're going to put the circuit board in, but first we've got some spacers. These little uh, bits here, the thicker ones, there's uh, two thicknesses of these. The thicker ones go in this layer here. Over each screw, they've got a hole in the corner there. And then this piece again goes over uh, the screws at uh, either corner. Make sure you've got that the right way up. The gap goes at the top where the battery goes and the bit across the bottom uh, connects those two pieces so that it's sort of solid around all the sides apart from where the battery compartment is at the top near the numbers on the calculator. Right, we've got the circuit board now and we're going to put it in place. So basically it just fits over those four screws that we've got stuck in with that sort of tape behind them. Uh, just gently put that on there, although I don't think you could really damage it to be honest. And now we've got these other spaces. These are thinner than the ones that we put on before. Again, those go over the two screws at the back here 
and then at the top and bottom of that there's another little piece that sort of joins it together uh, that little piece goes in there and then there's a slightly sort of wider one which goes at the bottom over the Spikenzie Labs logo and we'll just pop that on there and then finally it's the back piece which is going on here so we're just going to pop that on there now of course we're not going to be able to screw it up from this side because it's upside down so we'll have to flip it over holding it all in place making sure we don't sort of drop everything take that tape off and then just tighten up those screws a little bit more just at the last little bit to make sure they go through that back plate so we'll just work our way around doing these not too tight you don't want to break any plastic after all it's, it's only plastic this so don't sort of go crazy tight with it just enough to hold it together nice and firm and there we go that is it. We have now assembled our calculator. One final thing to do, put the sticky back feet on the back. Now we'll just put these sort of near each corner, not on the corners with a slightly raised, just sort of on the back there so that it rests nicely on the table like that. And that is it. A fully assembled Spikenzie Labs calculator. As you can see here, everything seems to be working. Now there's one key I wish they'd put on this, a percent key. I really do miss a percent key. That's something that I would use quite frequently. But that said, it's a perfectly working calculator that I've assembled myself, and that's pretty impressive. That soldering job, you could mire that on the back if you really want to. Uh, you can remember that uh, you spent an afternoon doing that when you look at it. Of course, it's nice and clear. You can see all the different components in here. Those kind of glossy numbers look quite smart as well, I think. In fact, the whole thing looks nice. It's a very nice looking kit. Somebody's obviously spent a lot of time and effort putting this together, other than me, of course. Now, if you go on the Spikenzie Labs site, you can find it on there. It's not a cheap thing. It's 35 euros. And that's about 44 US dollars. But of course, it's not all about the price, is it? I mean, you can go and get a calculator if you want from a pound shop. No, what you're paying for here is the fact that someone's took a lot of time and effort and ingenuity in coming up with a calculator kit that the average person can assemble themselves at home, have some fun while they're doing it, and get a big sense of accomplishment and achievement when they've finished it, and also have something that they can use afterwards. And for me, that's priceless. Anyway. For the moment, thanks for watching.